Well, it's Monday the 8th of January and I have an M5 with some severe problems. Uh, seems we've got a Vanos problem, we've got a mixture problem on bank one and bank two. And on top of that, we've also got some other issues. I'll just read the job card. 2% rich, bank one, bank two, too lean by 20%. It's trying to enrich it. Advanced and retired test. Passed bank one for Vanos, but failed the pressure hold test. Bank two not started due to mechanical issue with Vanos. So that's not good, it's minus nine. Yesterday was minus 28. This car has been here all weekend, so I guess it's gonna be quite a difficult job. We need to check the cylinders, we need to pull the covers off and check the Vanos wheels as well. So this is gonna be a big job. So we've got a load of fault codes and um, I'm thinking it's the Vanos because you've got a, a lean mix on one bank and you've got a rich mix on the other. So if the exhaust valves weren't working properly or the inlet valves were in the wrong position, then it could increase the emissions. So we'll do a smoke test first anyway. We'll just to double check and drill it out. That's the first clue, isn't it? Got a wet spark plug, it's full of fuel. That could either be this Vanos issue or it could be a compression problem. Because these engines run a big valve overlap to reduce um, NOx oxides, oxides of nitrogen, sorry. And there's no Vanos faults at the moment, but that's a big red flag. Whenever I get a vehicle that I've never seen before, I always do as much as I can to just to rule out everything really. And I thought a compression test to give an idea of the overall health of the engine wouldn't wouldn't go amiss here basically. And it's always good to know exactly what you're dealing with, especially with this valve time problem, which I was pretty sure we had. But after testing all of the cylinders and doing bank two again, just to make sure there was nothing found in any of the cylinders. And I deduced that the compression was pretty good. Some were better than others, some were worse, but overall very good. Well, as you'd expect from a car that was built in 2001, and I would say with probably not the most regular of oil changes that should have been done, the compressions were quite different on most of the cylinders. Not quite sure why we've got so much on number one and so much on number four, but nevertheless, number one being actually the worst one because there is a score down the cylinder. There is nothing we can do about that and literally we just need to get the guy to drive the vehicle because there's nothing really you can do with these, um, either Nicosil or Duracell, I, I forget the actual brand name of material they use, but they are coated liners and you can't really re -bore them. There's only one company in the States that does that and it's a very specialist repair. So, you just have to drive it and make the best of it, I suppose. But the compressions are reasonable, and on the right side, that cylinder's 5 to 8, which I decided just to do again, and I got a slightly better compression on number 6 and on number 8 the second time around. Um, for what that reason is, I'm not really quite sure. I think maybe there was an issue with my battery support, so I just made sure that the engine was spinning over at the same speed as it was on the other cylinders and turn up the battery support uh, voltage just to give it a bit of extra oomph so the starter motor wouldn't be struggling and get a uniform amount across across uh, the whole cylinders. So, good compression in that sense. So the wet fuel is, as I said all along, a problem with the Vanos timing and that will definitely do something as the engines when it could be that there maybe does lose a bit of compression when the Vanos tries to kick in. That's why we have wet fuel, in my opinion. So I didn't actually go into this procedure. If you know how, want to know how to do this, a cylinder leakage test, there's so much information on YouTube. There's no point in me using this as a form of tutorial. But I wanted to show you, and it's obviously a bit speeded up, that I did carry out a leakage test, which was quite difficult. The valve overlap on these is a bit crazy. But once that piston was, I would say, slightly before TDC, if you go to TDC, the valve's open, so you forget about it. So just before TDC, you get a good a good reading basically it involved turning the crankshaft pulley a bit at the same time to push it against the pressure but the result was no leakages good cylinders everything good and here is just a quick look at the vanos exhaust bank one and bank two 
uh, values, so the nominal position versus the actual. And really, to be honest, this was at idle speed. You don't really see that much of a difference. It's a little bit different, but there is always a slight difference. You never get them exactly bang on. So that really wasn't much use diagnostically in that sense. Uh, when I revved it again, it was a little bit sluggish, but you can get that on old cars. So really, it didn't really point out any major red flags, to be honest with you. But it's just interesting to see that this is just another thing that we can use. Sometimes it's miles off, in this case it wasn't. So it's very unusual that it wasn't miles off because it ended up being miles off when we actually opened the engine up, as you'll see shortly. And what you see there is really every single spark plug in that engine, this is bank two, which is, in, in a sense, the worst bank. They're all black and wet. Some have dried out there, but I can assure you they were all full of petrol. And obviously with no cylinder leakage, no compression problems and very unlikely that you've got like an issue with spark plugs because if you had an issue with spark plugs you probably wouldn't have them black because obviously it's a rich mixture so it's a combination of a rich mixture and a combination of basically wet fuel and we need to find out why we've got wet fuel don't we and in the end it just it, it did seem that it was looking more like the valve time and when i turned it over in fact it was a bit of a nightmare the um the exhaust cams were, were not really doing the job they weren't lining up with the locking pin holes so it was a little different than the usual problems we have which is usually with just one component it seems someone's been playing with this engine and they've just assembled it wrong in my eyes it's as simple as that So once the cam cover was removed, I just wanted to go straight in and pull off the Vanos hydraulic unit. There's two pistons in there, hydraulically activated and controlled by four individual solenoids. And they basically pushed the pistons forward with hydraulic pressure, which then drive a ram forward on a spiral thread, which advances and retards the camshaft. Quite simple, really. A little bit tricky to time up if you've never done one before, but once you've done one, they're quite easy. These solenoids also, they do require a bit of reflowing sometimes um, with flux to make sure that there's no problems. There should be around 3.8 to 4 ohms resistance, which I will bench test at some point. And all we have to do is just take these these large outer bolts out. There's one there, one there, one in the middle. Move the coolant hose out of the way. A couple at the bottom. And what we do, we put big long bolts in as well, just to make sure that we we can hold the weight of the the, the actual um, hydraulic unit, so we can kind of be hands free while we adjust the left-handed thread holding the pistons to the actuating rods. And here's a couple of ways of how to get Vanos solenoids out. They can be very tricky. What you must never do is bar the circuit board. The printed circuit board is very fragile and very old. Use the top of the Vanos housing to push onto the solenoid there and very, very gently, without putting any pressure, just gently wiggle the solenoids out. Then you can get them on the bench. Word of warning, they're very old, they're very fragile. You must be very, very careful here as they are virtually impossible to get hold of as spur parts. So with your Vanos unit unbolted, you put in these long bolts with an M6 thread, they're basically just generic bolts, nothing fancy about them. That allows you then to slide back the Vanos unit and expose the piston to ram shaft with a 7 and a 10 millimeter shanked um, setup. It's left-handed thread. And I'll show you in the next slide just exactly how to undo those. The reason you do the solenoids first, it's just easier than trying to put it in a bench vise. And when it comes to simply undoing the shafts as mentioned you need the 10 mil and the 7 mil and do it the old-fashioned way squeeze them together and then break it off and just be careful with it and it's a left-handed thread remember then you pop it off then we can get it on the bench and we can check the piston teflon seals are leaking or not leaking as would be the case that's the usual case when we have this pressure loss or pressure hold fail Pushes in like that, it's a good vanos, there's no leaks because it's compressing the air. Do the same with the other side. Same with the other side. 
quite good as that. So they've been changed at some point there, and that's the setup. You just put a nice rubber bung on, or your hand. And that's the piston seals, okay, but we'll replace them anyway in this M5 S62 Vanos. So it's just a bit of a test, but you've got eight solenoids, and I've got 3.5 on all of them. And I'm only doing that only because while it's out, I might as well do it. So that's just something to check. So you've got four there and you've got four on this bank here. So it's just something that you should always check really in my opinion. It looks like one circuit board's been replaced at some point as well. Well, when I looked a bit closer under the magnifying glass there, it's a bit of a disaster really. It seems the people who had done the repair previously who had not done a good job as they ended up timing up uh, bank, uh, bank one incorrectly as we'll see shortly. They'd used a the screwdriver behind the circuit board or in front of it and they'd basically just completely damaged all of the wires and put, well, I would say, non-compatible cloth tape because that certainly ain't compatible and the oil has just rotted it away. Uh, and it don't look too kosher, does it? So we need to do something about that. And you can see all those screwdriver marks, they are not from me, what you can see on the solenoid there. So here's another example, a bit closer up, you can see where they've just screwed over the yellow wire to that solenoid there, and it just looks a mess, really. I did think, should I just put a blob of solder on it, but I then realised, to be fair, it might not be too bad to unsolder it from the circuit board. You can see the screwdriver marks all over the solenoids, that wasn't me, I can assure you, I just get it in between the seal and there's like a gap on the solenoid and the seal and you can just like use it as like a little ridge to push against but you see with my pen how small it is that's a, a tiny fine ball point tip and you can see how small the wire is um so in the end i decided just to basically um to chop it all out and just replace so the wire what these people did i've got my old soldering station out now and i've just actually made a brand new wire on there i think for bad eyes and my age the soldering's quite reasonable so it's that yellow one there and it just tucks under there and I've just soldered it on the end. The board was in bad order really. But I've just took the tape off this one. Uh, I've actually put some replast on that wire there because it wasn't so bad what they've nicked. It isn't so bad. And it's going to be so small there's no point messing them out. But I've just noticed on this one, there's a hell of a bulge actually. You can just see it there. I've just took the tape off so they've damaged that. So maybe I'll even have to replace that one as well. Not so easy on such an old fragile board but... It seems all right. So when you've got it all stripped and on the bench, let's go through a couple of these components and what they actually are. First of all, you've got the hydraulic unit, which is this big chunky thing here, which we took off. Then you have the pressure hold valve, and that's very important. That obviously makes sure that you've got the right pressure going to the Vanos system itself. Then you've got your end caps there, which uh, basically cover the pistons. Then you have the pistons themselves. These are the hydraulic pistons, what slide up and down. And as they slide up and down on the Teflon seals, which obviously, of course, they're actuated by those solenoids that we just repaired in the previous part of the video. As the pistons move up and down, they actually push those rams forward, which are on just like an input shaft onto the camshaft. But the bit that actually does the turning of the camshaft independently of the timing chain is the spiral bit, which you can see on the end. And we'll just go and have a quick look for the last part of this video at what that spiral system looks like and how it works. And then, obviously, we'll uh, leave it there. And the next video will all be about timing and then replacing uh, all the parts that I want and actually getting the timing spot on. Just so my friend, Abdul, we wanted to know how this system worked. So, Abdul, there you go. It's a bit exaggerated, but you have a piston, hydraulic piston. And of course, on the spiral, it pushes it in and out and it advances and retards the camshaft timing independently of the chain. And what you must do when you time these up, it's very important, is you don't do it like that. You put that all the way that way, that one all the way that way. And then when this is bolted with left-handed thread back on the hydraulic Vanos unit, you kind of hang it on with some long bolts. I'll show you that stage a bit later on. And then, of course, it won't mate up. We've got a little special tool there, actually, in here. Someone actually has put this on slightly wrong. It doesn't matter which way it goes, but there is some, some holes here. You can't see them, but I think you can just see that one there. Really, the kind of should be, I would say, in that position, and you can put a screwdriver and you can move it, advance and retard it, because when you actually put this on, you'll notice it isn't quite lined up. So what you need to do at the same time is you need to just gently turn that 
and the, it's called the sweet spot and that sweet spot basically is exactly where it needs to be in the very first tooth but if you go past it you have a problem there and the sweet spot is coming right up Johnson says you can turn it there if you want as well but if you get it wrong the, that's the sweet spot if you miss that sweet spot you're going to get a problem with the timing it's going to be one tooth out and if it's one tooth out the timing so for example if we let's say we put it like this it won't work because it'll jam up it'll lock up before it reaches its maximum adjustment position and that's what's the most important thing about vanos is getting the timing right see if you do that now as you can see it won't advance and retard it enough up and people believe it or not they do get it wrong and that's so you have very little advance and retard so with vanos the secret always is all the way clockwise put that in the spline bit goes in the camshaft and then with pressure you just very gently at the same time as pushing forward and get it on the sweet spot and with one hand on a phone it's quite difficult to do but I'll try as I just did before bearing in mind you'll have the hydraulic unit suspended on long bolts so you can achieve this and there will be a sweet spot but it's not so easy with one hand there that's a sweet spot anyway you just must always make sure you get this maximum range of adjustment if you don't get that you'll have a fault called savannah's timing very suspicious when I see weird weird paint marks that don't seem to have any sort of they don't really make sense kind of thing and it looks like we've got a major problem with that because that ain't lining up is it so it looks like this V8 is going nowhere basically ah, yeah, yeah. 